Hi everyone, welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. I'm your host, Ethan Van Skyver, but a humble ink and superhero merchant, and an artist for DC Comics for about 20 years. Hi. Hey, today we're going to be discussing Batman the Dark Knight, number 28, a comic book that I drew uh, not too long ago. Looks like 2014 is the cover date here. Um, written by Greg Hurwitz. Uh, basically, this came about because um, Greg and I had just finished working on a story with uh, the Mad Hatter as the main villain. And I was very interested in drawing a story about the Man Bat. But I had a different kind of an idea for uh, Man Bat. I didn't want to do Kurt Langstrom. I wanted to introduce his father, who Greg named Abraham Langstrom. And I think he, he chose Abraham because it was biblical and uh, there are biblical implications about fatherhood when it comes to um, the biblical character Abraham. Um, I thought it would be interesting uh, to introduce uh, a character in Abraham Langstrom that would be the exact opposite of uh, Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's father. And um, in the sense that, you know, both of them are very wealthy, uh, Gotham City, um, multi-millionaires or billionaires, um, but how they use their money um, would be completely different. Uh, so, okay, so let's uh, crack this book open and have a look. Right away, I mean, we see uh, there's a uh, body that's just been completely drained of blood, and uh, look at the, ugh, the veins are all sticking out everywhere. You know, it's I don't. <laughs> it's very odd. I guess I got this idea that um, veins that are completely drained of blood would be, uh, and and that were like suctioned empty. You know, they were sucked dry, uh, would turn black, and it looks creepy. It probably looks better this way than it would if he was just a white corpse. And we have Batman. Um, it, you know, this is interesting here. I, I don't think that. Um, um, Commissioner Gordon knows Batman's there, so he's just holding up these two sample jars, and Batman just kind of, yoink, he pulls one out. I like this pluck uh, right out of his fingers and disappears. Um, and yeah, Gordon's like, what? Faced. All right, so let's turn the page. And uh, we're in the office of the laboratory of Dr. Kirk Langstrom, who is known to be Man Bat. And Batman swoops in like a bat. I mean, look, you know, covering his face up. This is the thing about my version of Batman. Uh, I do believe that his cape is meant to represent um, bat wings. Uh, it, it should be visually kind of uh, a cue all the time. Like, like he should he should use his cape um, the way bats use their wings. And as you can see, he's got the thumb. I mean, because bat wings, that's what they are. It's like the little spike that sticks up is, is the thumb. And then the digits actually, you know, kind of point down, radiate down. And um, they're super long. And then they're, there's webbing in between them. That's kind of what makes a bat wing. So, the, you know, these, these points would be kind of like thumbs on his cape. Um, poor Kurt is absolutely terrified. Kirk, I should say, is terrified in the shadow of the bat. And again, yeah, this is this is spooky Batman. Um, just opening up his cape, um, being scary. Um, and uh, Kirk is saying, I don't know what's going on. Batman looks in his eyes. And uh, he, he, you know, he, he sees that Kirk probably is telling the truth. Um, and here we go. We've got uh, our introduction of Abraham Langstrom big, handsome. I mean, you know, he looks like an older Bruce Wayne. He's got blonde hair, though. Um, there's a little bit of a devilish look in his eye. Um, he's kind to uh, the women who work in his office, and they are crazy about him. You can see they're checking him out. Um, yeah. Basically, I mean, this guy is... Oh, this didn't work out. <laughs> this is so dumb. So, sometimes... Um, uh, when you're trying to meet a deadline, you'll think of clever ways to, to cheat a page. And all we needed to do was show him walking down the hallway. So draw it once and then have him alternate it back and forth. The problem with this, I don't know where my head was at, um, but follow his the part in his hair. 
So basically, even though it's 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 kind of a clever little bit of movement that he's just walking down the page, uh, it's stupid because I should have at least drawn this one and and kept it consistent and then alternated these two panels. Instead, what you have is a gaff, and that happens uh, when you're not <laughs> when you're more concerned about getting a page done than you are about quality. Sorry, folks. And he goes into his office, and he's got a serum, and he injects it straight into his neck. Look at that. Look at that satanic lighting and the, the one eyeball that's lit up red as he uh, loosens his tie. And, and you can see, look, the bat wings starting to, his arms stretching out, growing more fingers here. He's just going to become this super version of man bat. He's a much bigger man bat than his son is much more dangerous. Uh, yeah, when they start to grow wings. And, and the thing about man bat is this. Uh, he needs to have more fingers because man bat actually has hands and wings, which isn't anatomically possible for a bat. Like, you know, so I had to actually have these fingers growing out of his arm so that they could grow and become the phalanges kind of that, that turn into bat wings and he could still have his hands, his fingers. Um, you can see, like, look, the, the wings actually grow out of his wrist here. And that's just the way he was designed. Um, so we have to kind of, I had to think that through a little bit and make that work. It certainly does look creepy on both sides. And this is an interesting use of the shape of panel here. Um, you know, just to use it, the length of it to stretch his arms out here as he drops the syringe and howls. Like, I mean, this is, this is one of my number one fantasies is to be able to turn into a, like a, a bat or a, a werewolf or the Hulk or something like that, just to become a powerful monster at will. Like the, the, the drama of that, the power, the, the curse, it just, I loved it since I was a kid. I've always loved that. Uh, and here he is. I mean, here's a double page spread of man bat. And this took a while. I mean, this took a long time. I think I really wanted to um, channel my inner Bernie Wrightson. Uh, I was talking to um, other artists at the time. Let's see, who was I talking to? I was talking to one of the guys from, oh, Stephen Bissett. I was talking to him on Facebook, and uh, he I, I like the way that he really went all out anatomically when he was drawing dinosaurs, and he would just show, I mean, I, I think I showed him this in progress, and he was, um, uh, he was complimentary about it. We can see all the different neato textures in here. Um, and this is, I mean, this really is a, a firework show here of, of me at, at my best. Uh, and the character looks imposing. He looks scarier than I think Man Bat usually looks. I, I you know, I I have to admit, like I don't really, I love the character of Man Bat. I don't think I've ever seen a Man Bat that looks better than you know, uh, you know, a version of this character that looks better than the one that exists in my in my own imagination. And this comes pretty close. Like I, I am, I'm very pleased with this. Uh, I mean, he's so much bigger that, like, his clothes now, his shirt, is just hanging off of him. I mean, look at that little tiny collar. His his head has grown. His pants, somehow you got to figure, <laughs> his pants, like, his lower torso is still kind of small. It's, it's, he didn't, it didn't grow that much, his legs, because bats have smaller legs and bigger upper bodies. Um, so his pants, fortunately, have stayed on. Um, yeah, drew all this very carefully. I, I just kind of lightly um, sketched in a background here. Uh, it doesn't matter. It, it certainly does. Uh, it, it does work. You look. I mean, there's not a lot of detail. Here. You have a you have a um, a building, and you have windows kind of lightly sketched in, and uh, some are lit up, and some aren't. Colorists did a really good job of bringing this background to life, and I wasn't let down at all. I mean, my work kind of my hard work on this paid off. So I could talk about this forever. <laughs> I'm really happy with it. Um, yeah, and then we go back to the Batcave where Alfred is sitting behind Batman's chair and Batman is doing um, some kind of toxicology lab on the, the, the sample that he swiped from, uh, from Gordon. And here again, I mean, look, it's just something about just repetition. 
these two are statted panels. Uh, it's like these three heads are statted, but let's see what's drawn and what isn't. Okay, so three, these three are statted together, and then these two are statted together. So basically I drew two Batman heads and I drew two Alfred heads and made five panels out of it. That is economy. I know what was going on at this, when was this? April 2014. Oh, I was doing a lot of conventions. That's the thing about doing conventions, I'll tell you. I, you know, um, people are always like, why don't you tour more? Well, I'm, I'm doing more comics. I'm trying to actually produce more books. When you do conventions, um, really, you have three days of the week maximum um, to draw. Because, okay, so, uh, you know, Thursday, you're leaving, you're packing up, and you're getting on an airplane to go to a convention over that, that begins the next day on Friday. I mean, usually you leave Thursday night to, to do a convention the next morning. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you are working at the convention. Sunday, you leave. Sunday night, you get home. And then Monday, Monday, you just drag because you've been beat up all weekend. <laughs> so, you know, you might get something done. And then you get into it. Tuesday morning, you're back in the swing of things. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning, you kind of do a little work. And then you get ready to do another show. And the thing about, you know, hopping on the convention ban like bandwagon is that there there is. There, there are conventions every weekend. And once you let people know that you're doing them, they all contact you. And, you know, if you're somebody who, you know, is a, a longtime DC Comics professional like me, um, it's all comped. You know, travel is free, hotel is free, um, and your table, all your accommodations are, are, are covered. So uh, you can actually make a decent living just on the convention circuit. Uh, and the problem with that is that your work suffers. And not only does your work suffer, but um, you do less of it. And people, and it's like, a, it's a kind of, it's a downhill slope because you're doing these conventions and people are forgetting why they're even coming to see you because you're not publishing comics anymore. And that's kind of why. <laughs> that is kind of why I'm not doing conventions very much. Aside from the fact that I'm a new dad and uh, conventions um, would either take me away from my family or I'd have to bring them, entertain them, and having a baby, traveling with a baby, whew, you know, it's not great. And yeah, you can see, I mean, right here, this is just, it's okay. You know, it's all right. Uh, it looks like a quickie page. Um, that's okay, too. Very quick. I probably drew this in two hours. This page is probably a total of four or five hours. Yeah, I was doing conventions all the time. I was dating Andrea, and we were hanging out at conventions, just, you know, enjoying ourselves. I was newly divorced, having fun. Um, all right, so here we go. This is actually pretty good stuff here. And whenever I was asked to draw a man bat, because this was my idea, uh, the idea that this version, okay, so we have this kind of elder of Gotham, and he has a son, and his son is a bat, just like Thomas Wayne had a son who was a bat. But, but see, the thing is, Thomas Wayne um, was a philanthropist and a humanitarian, and he actually gave to Gotham City. You know, he gave of, of what he made, and he, he was a different kind of father of the city. Whereas Abraham Langstrom also has a, a, a bat son and who is a, a monster, unlike Bruce. And uh, this guy is literally a vampire, and, and metaphorically a, a vampire. I mean, he sucks blood. Like, he's, he's one of these guys who... Um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take over businesses and corporations and bleed them dry. And, and then he, and at night, like he actually, he chooses to drink from, you know, the most vulnerable of Gotham citizens. This is some kind of homeless tent encampment, um, you know, and he's, he's choosing to drain these people who have the least to give. He's, he's truly a monster. I love this. I love him coming down here. Uh, that is a ferocious looking animal. Uh, again, you know, just nice, nice anatomy. Like I like his, I like the way his body is built. Just big, bulky upper body, lengthy arms. Um, he's still got his ha his hands. 
uh, his pinky is extended like extra extra long um, and muscular but short legs and big feet um, and this is just I mean absolutely this is why I wanted to do this panels like this um, I love drawing horror I love drawing monsters uh, and I've, I've loved man bat but like I said like this this guy here that face looking him licking the gore off his chops turning around feeding on him the way a bat feeds on uh insects uh you know it's just you know that's that's what it looks like and these guys back here can't are just like what the, what are they going to do about it what are they going to do they have no power in society they have no power now and uh yeah this is the face of pure evil as he takes off into the sky again. And I, I really, really love Man Bat. Just he's, uh, you know, he's such a, a great villain. So, this is uh, another quickie page here, but it's not so bad. I mean, you know, you've got, um, you've got uh, Bruce Wayne talking to Lucius. And uh, it's interesting. I don't know what happened here. Like, what, what is this texture here on his head? His hair. Oh, I I know why this must have happened. Um, I drew him much younger, and um, the edit editor said no, he's got gray in his hair because he's an older man. So probably colorist did this in production. Came up with this gray texture on his hair to kind of give him a little age, like his again bow tie. I don't know what it is with scientists at DC Comics. They all wear bow ties. They're bow tie guys. And here's Colin Bunn and Dale Eagles from Sinestro ad. I saw this and went, oh, Sinestro's been working out. And he's also about 50 years younger <laughs> than the way I draw him. Okay, good. And actually, it was really good. I, I did uh, a few issues of this run. Uh, we'll do commentaries for those. I didn't draw him like this. I drew him my way. Uh, yeah, here we have another kind of... Look at this. Kind of, this is a very McFarlane kind of way of of uh, drawing symbolically. Um, you know, it's like a, it's almost like a silhouette, but you're not actually using black. You're just indicating certain things and leaving it white because um, we've got the silhouette right here behind him. And uh, this is Abraham chastising his son. Uh, Abraham um, Langstrom would much rather have Bruce Wayne for a son. And his miserable look at this weenie. I mean, that's the real man bat right here. That's the long time, you know, man bat from uh, the Silver Age or the Bronze Age, I should say. And uh, his father is a much more powerful, much more in control and deliberate man uh, than his his son. Oh, what a disappointment! Why can't you be more like Bruce? And Bruce, you know, he doesn't want you for a father. Um, yeah, listen, if you're going to cut corners and use silhouettes, man, uh, use those, uh, you know, cool angles. Look at the size difference. Look at the size of this man compared to his son. Look at him hulking over his quivering, miserable son. Here's a great face right here. This is good. Good stuff. We're keeping everything black. We're keeping everything in silhouettes. This is a nice panel of uh, just the ma a mansion. You've got, I mean, this this is a man of means. He's driving, oh, he's driving an expensive town car here. Uh, looks British. And uh, walking down the stairs, the shadow of the devil. I mean, this isn't, this isn't even man, or uh, man bat's uh, silhouette. This is like the devil. I mean, look at him. And then I love this right here, just hanging upside down. I think I'm trying to be Jay Lee. You know, I always like Jay Lee's just really like ballsy use of shadows. And and you only have a little bit of green light here. Um, you can see he's sleeping. He hangs from his feet like a bat. Way down in his gym in his basement. And in the meantime, you have Bruce Wayne like uh, putting on his skin. I mean, these guys become, these men become bats in different ways. Uh, and, you know, we have another serum that uh, Albert, Albert, 
Alfred is pre is preparing back there. And uh, yeah, I, I like this. I like it again. More more shadows, more heavy shadows. Uh, I have to tell you, you can't stop. You know, there's no need to stop putting like black ink on Bruce Wayne or Batman. There can never be enough. It always looks good. I mean, when you draw a Green Lantern, or when you draw... No, not Green Lantern, because Green Lantern has a lot of black on his suit. But when you draw the Flash, you avoid that. Like, you avoid darkness as much as possible, unless you're trying to imply mystery. But, there, you know, with the Flash, it, mostly it's it's just bright, sunny, superhero, you know, um, science action, super science action. Um, with Batman, it's everything is darkness and shadow and fear and, you know you can go ahead and just and go crazy with it. Again, I mean, I like these little shots. I'm, I'm sticking with it. You know, I'm sticking with the Timber and Batwing. Sorry. I like it. Yeah, inside the Batwing. I, I think everyone has drawn this shot. If you draw Batman, eventually you draw a shot of him inside the interior of the Batmobile or... Uh, a tank, or you know what I mean, or one of his planes. You, you always draw this shot, and then the computer, like, of his uh, the control panel of whatever he's operating, is just lighting up his face a little bit. So he's flying through Gotham City, and and there you go. He's like, what the, a thing of night, like an airborne virus, like a winged curse. Like me. I don't be so hard on yourself, Bruce. You're doing a good job. This is great. Really happy with this. I like this little figure of Batman. It's like we've got three bats in a row here. We've got the Batwing, bigger Batman, gigantic man bat. So it's just kind of a neat looking panel. Um, pretty good background too. So uh, apparently at this point I'm back from the convention circuit and I'm taking an entire week or two to uh, do my job. <laughs> And indeed I am. Look at this. Batman just tackles him like this. He's got he's got the serum that he's gonna inject him with. And we get just a full I mean this is uh I don't know if I can do better than this. I think this is my best work. I really, really like it. I like the wing. Kind of uh we see kind of the underside of it a little bit. Yeah, man bat is startled, it's a good action pose. I've never seen Batman placed on a splash page like this before. I mean maybe it's happened. Um, but just like a tuck and roll and kind of uh, you know, getting him in a headlock like that and then using his bat uh, his cape, his bat cape, uh with his other hand. It's kinda neat. And again, I mean just let's strangle him let's let's tie him up basically you know we're hanging off of man bat we're doing this midair ballet trying to get this thing into him i mean this is he's got to be injected and this is this is i'm sure he's got thick skin <laughs> this struck me as cute when i was drawing it look at him oh i don't know he looks he looks cute he looks like a little mouse and uh yeah i, I think we've got kind of the upper hand now um, but forget it. The needle's just gonna break right off. He's gonna bite right through your bat rope and send you plummeting to the earth. Um, hey guys, one point perspective. Again, I, like I told you in that lesson, one point perspective is movement, it's thrust, and, you know, when you're showing someone falling, you can, uh, or running, I mean, you know, you have a one point right down there, You've got your, you know, uh, vertical lines, all, you know, um, perp not perpendicular, parallel. Ugh, I got three hours of sleep last night, guys, sorry. And then, you know, parallel, parallel. And then you've got your horizontal lines, and then you've got your um, vanishing point. Um, and there you go. I mean, that's, that's pretty much all you need. <laughs> To, to show just a, a figure in free fall. So uh, that's it in my first issue here. Again, like I said, I think these this was going to be a two-part um, series. And I might as well just show you the next one now, too, because um, I didn't draw very much of it. All right. Here we go. So here's Batman the Dark Knight number 29. And this cover is fantastic. Uh, we still own the original of this because 
Uh, okay, so this is this is May of 2014. I am uh, in a new relationship now, and I'm dating Andrea, and that is definitely my priority. Going to conventions with her, showing her a good time, having fun, that is priority one. My work is less of a priority right now, as you're about to say. But I did draw this cover, and she liked it so much, she said, why don't you ever keep any of your work? And I said, well, you could have this if you wanted it. And, um... And she wanted it, so um, we still have this now in our family. Here is uh, Batman Free Falling. Uh, this isn't bad, it's okay. You know, it's fine. Again, one point perspective, but we're showing it from... We're, we put the uh, vanishing point down in this corner a little bit because we want to show the movement. You know, Batman's here, he's falling down inwards, okay? So we know that the vanishing point should be down here. Uh, it works just fine. The colors, I really like how he... Okay, so we knocked out all this line work. And then he chose these lovely kind of pastels with a lot of light. Uh, it makes the city look like it's nighttime. And it's and yet, the city is still alive. Um, yeah, the Batman's costume. Uh, like knee pads like this. I don't know. I just... Uh, uh. And this is interesting too here. This is a good sequence of panels. Um, very Hitchcockian of me. Alfred Hitchcock and Orson Welles. You know, I watch the movies very carefully. And, you know, it, all this stuff. I mean, these are things that apply to, to comics as well. Comic storytelling. You know, it's like, okay, so we're just going to show hands. We'll show the back of his head. We'll show hands, feet, and a little cape falling. But what's making us know that we're falling is up here's the Batwing. And it gets smaller and smaller as we flail. Look at it. And now it's way up there. We're about to hit the ground. Um, and here's our beautiful man bat again. Looks like he's got... Yeah, he looks good. I like classic shot of him, his wings hugging the moon here. City just in... You know, look, there's the uh, bat wing way back there. So we know he's escaping. And uh, Batman kind of, again... Flips around in free fall. His wing, his, his cape is all torn up. It's not going to catch the air. You know, shoot out a line. Pop, pop. And then, ah, grit your teeth because this is going to hurt. And then, catches you. You know, there you go. So, you're basically propelled, like almost crucified in between above the city here. And there you go. If you look, what happened here? Greg Hurwitz writer, Jorge Lucas, with, with Ethan Van Sciver, pages one through five. So what you've just seen is my entire contribution to this book, besides the, uh, the, the cover, Batman created by Bob Kane. Um, this is the only greater crime than what I did here. I didn't finish it. I was too busy. I was out doing conventions. I was out having a good time. I was out kind of um, getting over divorce and, and starting a new life, planning a new family, you know, eventually, uh, which actually came out of it. So it was all worth it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's a shame because these books kind of live forever. And now I have to excuse myself to you while a new artist takes over and finishes the story that was my idea you know it's like this was this book exists this two-part story exists because i said so and uh i didn't even finish it you know all of this is uh, this is a shame i mean this is a shameful thing to me jorge does a really good job of kind of following uh my bat design here he does really well but this was meant to be by me i think um, people were expecting me to do it, and I didn't do it. So, you know, it's like, right here, I mean, this kind of continues this, you know, bunch of failures in a row. Like, you know, asking myself, where are my priorities right now? You know, am I a comic book artist? Is that what I am? Because I'm not finishing my work, and I'm not really um, devoted to it. I'm out there signing comics, doing sketches for people, and then partying after hours, not paying attention to my work. And all of this would lead to just kind of 
work grinding to a halt. And when that happens, uh, you know, I, I kind of needed to have a come to Jesus moment, humble myself, like literally humble myself and be like, okay, I am a comic book artist. That's who I am. I've worked my entire life to get here. I'm not giving it up just because I've had a few, um, you know, what's the word that you would look for? Bad things happen. I don't know. All at once. Um, it's time to refocus my energy. And, um, you know, that's what I did. DC asked me what I wanted to do. And I said, a anything, anything lantern. <laughs> so that's where we went from here. Um, but there you go. Um, it's a, it's a two part story that, um, is good. Uh, I should have finished it. I really should have. It's a regret. Um, and look, oh, my name isn't even on the cover. Like, it's not even on the cover. That's, that's disgraceful. My cover, uh, my idea, and DC said, well, you didn't do enough of it to really merit a cover credit. That is, um, that's shameful right there. And that was kind of like them, maybe in a way, kind of like scolding me. Um, so, anyway... That is the reality of being a comic book artist. You do have deadlines, you do have uh, obligations, and uh, you do need to stay focused. It's, it's, um, it should be, you know, second only to family. This should be the main objective of your every single day. And when it isn't, this happens. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that cautionary tale. Um, Hey, listen, hit the subscribe button, please. Tell friends about this channel. I'd love it if uh, we continue to grow at the pace that we're growing at. It's a wonderful community. And uh, I do appreciate each and every one of you. I'll continue to do commentaries. I'll continue to speak honestly about the stories that uh, went on behind the making of these comics, if you're interested. Um, and uh, I do appreciate your, your audience. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys have a great day. And we'll see you again later. Bye-bye.